Hello. Okay. So, I uh, want to talk about stripping photoresist. I've got a couple of wafers that have just gone through lithography and, um, and then etching. Uh, specifically, these two went through a germanium etch uh, using uh, chrome, chrome etching. Um, so now the photoresist is ready to come off. Um, now there's a lot of ways to strip photoresist, particularly positive photoresist. Um, it's pretty easy to get positive resist off. You can solvate it in acetone. Um, you can solvate it in uh, a number of organic solvents that are common in the cleaner. Although it will not solvate very well in methanol and not at all in isopropyl. But the chemical of choice for us is a chemical called an NMP. Let me go get it. Okay, so this is N-methylperilidinone. Um, it's widely used uh, for stripping positive photoresist. And the way it works is you heat it up to about 50 degrees C, 50 or 70. You drop your wafer in, you give it five minutes, and the photoresist is nicely stripped. Now I mentioned you can use acetone. In most clean rooms, your acetone comes in bottles like this, and on a lot of chemistry labs and so on. Well, you never, you want to be very careful using this stuff on your wafers. Why? Because this high density polyethylene is actually solvated by acetone at a very low level. So what happens is, you think you're rinsing your wafer off with something that's clean, it's not clean. This acetone in plastic bottles in HDPE, excuse me, process running in the background. So this uh, is in HDPE, high density polyethylene, I believe. And when you spray your wafers and let this dry, acetone has a very high, it's very volatile, has a pretty high vapor pressure. Uh, you will see a residue on your wafer. So never ever let acetone dry on your wafer. You can use it on your wafers, but you have to rinse it with methanol or isopropyl before the acetone dries at all. And we're certainly not going to use this with uh, a CMOS wafer or something we're trying to do semiconductor work with. So that's one of the reasons we, win, we end up with NMP. Now I could also use an oxygen plasma to uh, remove the photoresist. Um, in the case of CMOS, I will, I will use that as a second step, um, but I like to use the NMP as a first step in case there's any particles that have built up on top of the photoresist. So that nicely solvates, like, you know, oxygen plasma isn't going to take care of metal particles, for instance. So the nice thing is a nice rinse, in NMP, make sure that the, the layers of photoresist come up, um, and then then I'll put it in uh, the oxygen plasma. Uh, the other thing that takes care of is the adhesion layer that I put down, HMDS. So that is a molecule that forms essentially a mono layer on top of the silicon um, uh, to form an adhesion promoter with the photoresist. Um, and it doesn't usually come off in just regular uh, solvents. So uh, I can make sure that we get back to the virgin surface by using a combination of NMP and, uh, and plasma, oxygen plasma. Stupid mask. Ugh, COVID sucks. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to show you how we do this um, in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to take these two wafers and I'm going to uh, strip the photoresist off of them. Uh, they've had the germanium etched yesterday um, and I'm going to use NMP. Now, as usual, or well, NMP to work best needs to be heated 
This is a, a, a dedicated quartz beaker because I'm trying to do CMOS work. Uh, we only use quartz, you never use Pyrex because it's loaded with ions. And also because we have a lot of other processes in this clean room that are not compatible uh, with CMOS, um, it's absolutely necessary to have just your own dedicated uh, glassware. Now, as usual with these fancy hot plates, uh, first thing I do is defeat the level indicator interlock uh, with a little bit of DI water um, so that I can uh, overcome the, uh, the level interlock. So the NMP, the hot plate sitting at 90 degrees C, so the NMP is probably around 70. All you got to do is pop these suckers in there. Nice thing about NMP is we know it gets along with all of our materials. We know it's CMOS grade, a very, very high purity uh, reagent. So what we're going to do is we just pop the wafers in there, give them a swirly swirl. And that's it. You just let them sit. Give them about five or ten minutes. A nice, uh, cozy 70 degree C. I can actually put these thermal couples in. And we can check what the temp actual temperature is. With these fancy hot plates, you can't control either with the thermal couples or you can control the surface temperature of the hot plates. Close enough. I don't really care. Uh, so looking at the controller, it looks like it's still coming up, maybe about 50 degrees C. Okay, so now we wait. When you're fabbing in a clean room and you get to a step where you gotta wait, go do something else. Don't stand there and look at your phone. Don't look at email. Well, maybe email. But be productive. Your time in the clean room is very expensive. You don't wanna waste your advisor's money. You don't wanna waste your sponsor's money. It's like working in a restaurant. Always stay busy. All right, that's all I have to say about that for now. Okay, five minutes are up. Time to pull it out. It may be hard to see in this light, but the solution is a little bit brownish. That's a good sign. That means it's solvating something. Presumably our photoresist. You don't want to swirl them too hard in this in this uh, glass beaker. Um, I have had wafers crack uh, by banging against the side of a beaker. So, gonna pull them out. Put them in the carrier. My little baby two-inch carrier. All right, there they are, QDR. Now when the stream starts, I'm gonna put my tweezers in there and rinse them off. Okay, while well, that runs, three quick dump rinses. I'm gonna go take care of this. Uh, we have a big vat of it that everybody uses for cleaning off their regular wafers. So I just put, add a, you know, shoot, 30 milliliters. 
So then I give it a quick rinse and DI and dry it and we're done. It's kind of nice. NMP is miscible in water. Um, so you can rinse with water and it works. NMP stinks. It's not super dangerous, but it does stink like... Oh, I can't even describe it. There's a lot of chemicals I've worked with over the years that I don't even know what they smell like. This is not one of them, though. Because working in the fume hoods keeps you safe. All right. Now the wafers will come out, and I'll give them a quick dry. Focus on that. Ugh. Right now the GoPro is a little dead. I'm a little short of uh, USB-C chargers. All right, it's just finishing up the cycle. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the first wafer. It's Friday at five o'clock. I kind of want to go home. No reason to actually wait for the whole cycle. Light, nice nitrogen dry. Yes, thank you. I dry the tweezers because we don't want to leave water marks on there. And as usual, while I'm drying, I hold one edge of the wafer against the clean room wipe so that the water has somewhere to go when I chase it to the edge with the uh, nitrogen. All righty. Put that up there. Make sure my tweezers are dry. Grab a hold of the wafer. All There's what it looks like. Hard to see anything here, but we'll put it under the microscope and have a look. And the next thing, take a look at it under the microscope, but the exciting and more interesting thing is getting the thickness with the uh, propylometer. All right, as usual, I make sure everything's clean, dry, turn off my hot plate, put away my beakers. This is a clean room after all, so we do, you know, try to keep it clean. All right, all right. Have a good weekend, everybody. I'm out.